Pastor Paul Shepard has been preaching since his teens and has been in pastoral ministry since 1982. He served as associate pastor of West Oak Lane Church of God in Philadelphia, Pennsylvania for seven years and as senior pastor of Abundant Life Christian Fellowship in Mountain View, California for 20 years. In 2010, he founded Destiny Christian Fellowship in Fremont, California, where he serves as senior pastor. Pastor Shepard is a native of Philadelphia, Pennsylvania. He studied at the University of Pennsylvania, the Center for Urban Theological Studies, and the Southern California School of Ministry, from which he earned a master's in ministry degree and was later honored with a doctorate of divinity. An effective communicator of God's Word, Pastor Shepard is widely known for his practical and dynamic teaching style, which helps people apply the timeless truths of Scripture to their everyday lives. He serves as speaker for the daily radio and online broadcast, Destined for Victory. He's also an author whose latest books include Lessons from the Vineyard, Developing a Life That's Rich in Character and Defeating Discouragement, Learning from Elijah's Experience. He and his wife Meredith have been married since 1982. They are the proud parents of two adult children who work alongside them in ministry. Please welcome Pastor Paul Shepard. Praise the Lord, everybody. It is a great joy to be with the First Baptist family once again. While you're standing, let's pray. Father, we give this time to you. The atmosphere is already set for your word with the beautiful singing from these young people. Now, Lord, speak a timely rhema word into our hearts as you continue to make us better. In Jesus' name, amen. God bless you. You may be seated. Greetings in the strong name of our Lord. I give him all the glory, honor, and praise for the opportunity to be here with the church, church family once again. I consider myself, I pastor a church on the West Coast, but for all practical purposes, I'm a member at large of First Baptist Church of Glen Arden, Maryland. And um, I'm so honored to be back with the church family. The last time I preached here was two years ago and it was in this sanctuary. Only the technical people were here, it was dark, and I was talking to a camera. I said, oh Lord, that's not First Baptist at all. <laughs> and I'm so glad that we are, the saints are gathering back home. <laughs> Glory to God. It's good to see you all. I give much honor to your pastor, my dear friend and covenant brother, Pastor John K. Jenkins Sr. in his absence, to his, his wife, my sister, First Lady Trina, to all of the bishops, all of the um, elders, all the ministers here, everybody who is honorable. If you are honorable, trust me, I honor you. And I'm so glad to, um, to be able to be here. Um, I'm telling you, uh, Larry and, and the music team, y'all are doing a phenomenal job with these young people. Wow. Saints, I'm so proud of you that you have learned that they're not the church of tomorrow, they're the church of today. They are part of what God is doing. They will reach a generation we will never be able to reach. So what you all are doing in having them lead right here in the main services is just phenomenal. And uh, I trust many of us around the country will do the same thing, invest heavily in the generations following us, or else there will be no success without successors. And so we praise God for them. Um, so I, I, there's so much I, I would say, but time uh, gets away from us, so I'm going to jump into the Word. I've tweaked the message between services. I'm going to say generally the same things, but the spirit that is in this room and, and uh, much of the feedback I got, I stood down here after service and talked to a lot of folks, and it lets me know that I really need to lock in on one of the concepts I share. And so I'm going to do that right now. Uh, here's what I want to do. I want to talk to you from Ephesians chapter 6, verses 10 through 12. If you have a Bible with you, go there. I'm sure they'll put it on the screen for us. Ephesians chapter 6, verses 10 through 12. Here's what the Apostle Paul had to say to us. Finally, my brethren, be strong in the Lord and in the power of his might. Put on the whole armor of God that you may be able to stand against the wiles of the devil. If you mark in your Bible, I want you to mark the wiles of the devil. For we do not wrestle against flesh and blood, but against principalities, against powers, 
against the rulers of the darkness of this world, against spiritual hosts of wickedness in the heavenly places. If you're new, I know this is a church that not only grows continually but brings in new folks as it does so. And as I may be brand new to some of you. I need you to know I have my own gifting. We're all unique. Everybody's called for, with their unique gifting. The worst thing in the world you can do is take your gifting and try to make it act like somebody else's. I say that to say, because this church has some of the greatest preachers literally in the world that come through here. I know I've, I've been hanging out with y'all for 18 years. I met Pastor Jenkins in 2005. That was the first year he had me preach. I've, he's blessed me to be invited back most years since. And um, so I know I've, I watch this church all the time. Y'all have the greatest preachers in the world and greatest types of preachers. And so if you're into hooping, God bless you. I love literally some of my best friends are, are some of the greatest Hoopers, I know. They go into a, a key and man, they wear you out, boy. Um, and that's good. That's good. And I enjoy it. Not, I'm not a hater at all. I'm a congratulator. But my gifting is I'm a pastor teacher. To pastor is to lead and feed God's people, to be like a spiritual parent and help them grow up. And the teacher side of my gifting, a teacher is supposed to do permanent damage to ignorance. So I'm not going to holler, I'm not going to hold my ear and go in the E-flat. I had my years of doing that back before y'all knew me. I did that because that's what I thought preaching was. And, uh, but when I started teaching, that's when I saw the most effectiveness in my ministry. And I said, you know what, that's where God's called me and I just need to hang out there. And so today I just want to teach you about some things about this text. Now I want you to notice in the text that it says we're wrestling against principalities, plural, against powers, has an S on the end, plural, against rulers, plural, of the darkness of this world, against spiritual hosts, plural, of wickedness in the heavenly places. We are up against an organized strategic army that is warring against each of us to keep us from being the people God has called us to be. And what I want to do in this remaining 27 minutes is to help you understand that you have a destiny that our theme this year, I say our because I'm practically a part of this church, is a, theme of, of, uh, a season of transition. And God is wanting to transition all of us in different ways into the next phase of what he has designed for us. But here's what I want to, to say to you. You're not going to transition smoothly, easily, or automatically. Just because God has ordained it doesn't mean it'll happen for you. You've got to be ready to fight your way into some transitions. And so I've entitled this Transitioning Through Warfare. Because you're not going to transition just by naming and claiming, blabbing and grabbing. We, are, we love claiming that we, we think we can faith our way into anything. And our singers say, just faith your way into it. That sounds good, but sometimes you can't faith your way. You got to fight your way. Doesn't mean you lay down your faith. It just means you use your faith to fight the enemy. And so we need to fight. And specifically, what I want to focus on, I mentioned it in the last uh, message, I want to focus more on if the, if the enemy is organized and strategic, so we must be. The problem we have with too many Christians today is that we love the concept of independence. We, we, we live in a country that celebrates every 4th of July, the Day of Independence. That's fine, but y'all got to understand, that, that meant we were getting rid of, uh, of British rule. That had nothing to do with you living your life independently. Y'all got to quit all this, I'm my own person. That's what's wrong with you. You're your own person and you do your own thing. And the enemy that is organized and strategic and unified, they gang up on you, and you know how it is. We all who grew up in the hood, you knew there were certain, certain places, certain neighborhoods you didn't go in by yourself. You were asking for trouble. And we in the church have to stop celebrating independence and begin to celebrate interdependence. And what that means is 
I am dependent upon brothers and sisters and they are dependent on me because while one can chase a thousand, two can put 10,000 to flight. You can get more done in your walk with God and you'll be able to transition the way God wants you to transition if you start building, I want to give you a phrase that I want to stick with you for the rest of your life, purpose partnerships. You need partnerships with people who will walk with you and they will help you fulfill your purpose. That's what they're called to do. So the transitions God has for you, these folk will be vested in making sure you're in a position to experience all that God has for you. So I want you to understand that this is God's plan. Now, the way I want to do it is just talk about five wiles of the devil, five ways that he works against us. And what I'm using is the five W's of journalism. Some of you who uh, learned journalism, you know that you were taught when you're building a story, there are five key questions you need to answer as you write your story. And they all begin with W. Who, what, when, where, why. Y'all been to school too. All right, so you understand the five journalism questions. Well, let me show you that the wiles of the devil make sure that he and his organized enemy that come against you, they use the same five uh, W's. Here's the way they do it. The enemy knows who is not walking carefully. Now, see, the Bible, when when it talks about these different categories of demons that you saw, when we wrestle not against flesh and blood, but against principalities, powers, all of that, those are categories of demons, and they work strategically together. One of the groups of demons that work against you, the Bible calls in the Old Testament, familiar spirits. You ever read that as you read, like Leviticus, familiar spirits? Well, familiar spirits, the, the Hebrew word that comes from means familial family spirits. There are demons that have been watching you and your kinfolk all of your lives. And they've been assigned to y'all. They know y'all. They watch you. They've studied you. And they strategically pull together things that are unique to bring y'all down. Now, you need to understand. Now, if you don't believe me, okay, that's fine. You, you, you have the right to be wrong. <laughs> but anybody who wants to experience your transitions like God has them for you, you better listen up because there are some demons that know you and they know where you're not walking carefully. Yeah. And they want to use that against you to keep you. See, they can't keep you out of heaven. When you're saved, the reason why at the end of this message, I'm going to invite some people to Christ. And I want some of y'all who are here who don't know the Lord, I want you to know that's your time in the service. You're supposed to be down here at the end of this service and let the Lord change your life forever. And the enemy knows once you make that decision and come down here and give your life to Christ, there's nothing he can do about it. Your eternal soul is locked in with God. You're going to heaven when you leave this world. Without a doubt, you're going to heaven when you leave this world. But they also know, but between here and heaven, they can put you through a lot of hell. And God wants you to transition without going through all this hell. And in order to do that, you're going to have to have purpose partnerships. People who help you understand where you're not walking carefully. Some of you all don't have purpose partnerships. That, that, that is people who are not your fans, they're your friends. Some of us only hang out with our fans because they stroke our egos. They make us feel wonderful all the time. I came to tell somebody, God wants you, in order for you to transition, you you can say hi to your fans, sign autographs, and take pictures with them. But if you want to get through as much of this life without going through the hell of unfulfillment, spiritual unfulfillment, you need to invest in partnerships with friends. The Bible defines who friends are. It says things like a friend loves at all times. If you got fair weather people in your, fam- in your uh, circle, they're not, that, that's not who is going to be a purpose partner. Because I don't need fair, I don't have fair weather, uh, fair weather all the time. Why would I need you? And you require fair weather. 
I got to be having a great time. I got to be on top of my game every day, every season. And if I'm not, you are sick of me. Well, if you're sick of me, then I can't work with you. Because God's taking me through seasons of transition. I got to fight my way through those, and I need people who can help me fight. So the people who will help me fight are people who say, you don't have to be on top of your game. I got your back. In fact, if you're having a rough time, I'm really there now because a friend loves it all times. There's another proverb, Proverbs 27, 6, that says, faithful are the wounds of a friend. Not everybody who cuts you hates you. Some people cut you because they love you. See, not everybody with a sharp object is trying to come for you. An enemy does, but so does a doctor have a sharp object. But they call that surgery to make you better. So you got to understand, you must identify purpose partners who are okay with telling you the truth, no matter how you feel about it. Some of y'all don't have the right people in your circle, in, in your close circle. You don't let them come in your circle because everybody's got to make you feel good. You need people who can tell you you need a mint. <laughs> let me just help you now. If you, if you get offended because I slipped something into your hand, you're not ready to transition. They, do you, know, you do know they're not tearing your, your character down. They're just handing you this. All this means is if we want to continue this conversation, it would be, a, it would be really helpful because I need to probe and talk about what you're really going through and you're making it difficult right now for me to probe. See, you look at the folk who were here in the first service, they said, he didn't say that. God, between services, I tweaked it. I knew some of y'all were coming who needed me to take this angle. I'm going to still give you the five W's, but I need you to understand you got to pull together the right people. If you get your feelings hurt just because somebody tells you a heart, if you can't take a mint, what you going to do when I really come for you for real? You need people who can tell you, I, what I'm seeing, you're not walking carefully in that area. You need to mind the way you're doing your relationships. You need to mind your attitude. You need to mind how you're handling things on that job. So the enemy knows who's not walking carefully and he's strategically working against you to keep you from transitioning into God's plans for your life. And you need some purpose partnerships who will make sure that you get where God is taking you. And they are willing for you to be mad at them. If you don't have people who are willing to hurt you and wait for you to get over it, then you need to invest in that. If your friends just get, just, they, oh, you, be, I better not say that because that, she'll be through with me. Let her be through. And then when she decides she need to hear the truth, she can come back because you got the same truth in your mouth you had that ran her off the first time. The second thing you need purpose partnership for is because the enemy knows not only who's walking careful, who's not walking carefully, they know what your weaknesses are. They know what your weaknesses are. They've been, see, the familiar spirits know your weaknesses. So your purpose partners have to know them too. The enemy already knows your weaknesses. They've been studying you all your life. They watch you through all your phases. They know the things that get you. I said in the first service that some people can really be gotten by, by uh, uh, alcohol because that's in your bloodline or whatever it is and, that, and, and you have a predisposition and all of that. And so you need some people who can help you with sobriety. Kingdom people who can help you. It's good for, for all the, the, you know, the anonymous, uh, uh, all that stuff. But you need some folk who not only know sobriety, they know Jesus. 
so that they can take you before the throne of the Lord and talk to you about Bible stuff that'll help you. But some of us, that's not a thing. Now, if, if alcohol has never been a temptation for you, don't feel superior to the folks who struggle with it. You know why? Because you got your stuff. And sin doesn't come in categories. I hope you know there are no felony sins and misdemeanor sins. Sin is all unrighteousness. Everything that doesn't please the Lord for your life is called sin. Sin comes as actions, sin comes as attitudes, sin comes as motives. And don't think you're special because you don't have that man or that woman's problem. Ooh, I have, I have never stooped to that in my whole life. Even when I was in my sins, I never stooped to certain things. Well, you might not have stooped to those things, but let's walk you over here to some stuff you did stoop to. And what makes you think you're special because you don't have that person's problem? All that means is God wants to bring them through theirs and make them what they're going through better and so that when they come out, they can find the people who had that same problem and they can walk them through. But you got to get to get to be as familiar with your weaknesses as the enemy is. He already knows you. He knows what floats your boat and rings your bell. And when you're, and, and especially as sometimes age categories, you find different things you especially got to be careful about. So the Bible says things like flee youthful lust. See, there's some things when you're youthful that you're, you're prone to, and some of y'all have a weakness in that area, you have to flee. The Bible said flee youth, youthful lust. Don't try to be so strong that you deal with it. No, you, you're setting yourself up for disaster. Flee. There are some things, some, some manifestations of strength is a good run. I don't prove I'm strong, but I'm going to stand here and rebuke the devil. He'll rebuke you back. Sometimes you got to have the strength to run. Don't believe me? Just ask Joseph. He was a young man, red-blooded young man, all in another country, been sent there by a slave. He could have been bitter and all that and couldn't care, couldn't, couldn't, couldn't care anymore about living holy because he was now in, the, in Egypt but he knew I'm still a child of God. And when Sister Potiphar put her eyes on him, y'all read the Bible, I, I just call her Sister Potiphar. Sister Potiphar said, the Lord is my shepherd, I see what I want. She saw that young handsome, the Bible says he was well built and handsome. Now when the Bible says you well built and handsome, I mean, bro, had it going on. All the sisters would be like, whoo, praise the Lord. You have to know that you're not supposed to try to fight. Sometimes you got to run. And when Sister Potter for grabbed him, he ran out of his cloak in order to save his dignity. It cost him years in jail for a crime he did not commit. But don't worry about it. When you do the right thing, God knows how to transition you. And even if you mess up, anybody in here besides me messed up or am I the only messer upper in the house? I'm willing to be if that's the case. Thank you for those hands. There's a few rows I see somebody didn't have their hands on pray because you got some liars on your row. So you got to get to be familiar with your weaknesses. And your purpose partners will help, identify, help you be familiar with them even if you're not currently familiar with them. You need to ask the right people, tell me what you see when you look at me in my weakest moments and then don't get mad when they tell you. The enemy knows these things, so you gotta know them too. Who's not walking carefully, what your weaknesses are. Third one, when to bring certain temptations your way. 
The enemy knows when to bring them certain temptations your way. He knows the season you're going through. Certain seasons call for things. So youthful lust happens in a certain season. But after you get older, you might still be tempted in that area, but um, there's going to be some new temptations. I'm now, when I first started preaching for, for uh, First Baptist, I was in my 40s. I'm now 65. And, and stuff has switched up on me. This three, four, and this three score and five is no joke. I'm like, when did I get old? But just keep on living. You're going to get there. Enjoy your youth. But you're going to get here. And when you get to the senior years, you still got stuff to deal with. You might not have as much loof, uh, youthful lust problem, but you got some other stuff. You got to watch your attitudes. You got to watch your attitudes toward young people. I know a whole lot of, uh, that's why I'm applauding y'all, whole lot of old people who will not support these young folk up here. Whole lot of old people mad. I don't like the church changing. They standing up there in all them, all them dress, I mean, they don't wear dresses. They up there in pants. And, 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 You and your nasty holiness. And all you doing is running off a generation that you could win if you would love them and support them and say, go ahead, children. They don't have to do it your way to do it. They got their own way. And you got to watch your attitude the older you get. You can get cantankerous and irritable for no reason at all. Just old and mean. And I just, I just have, have declared war on elderly meanness in the body of Christ. We got to start supporting these young folk and telling them God is going to do great things through your generation. You got to learn, you got to learn their, their, their uh, words, stuff that meant something to us. It means something different to their generation. I was talking to one of my young couples, one of my millennial couples, or they're probably Generation Z, and they said, Pastor, we want to uh, get married. I said, okay, praise God. And so I said, okay, just tell me a little bit about y'all. When did y'all hook up? I'm old. When we said hook up, we meant when did you get together? Like just like meet like at Starbucks or something. They said, oh, pastor, no, no, we haven't hooked up. I said, wait, y'all standing here want to get married and haven't hooked up. But I'm smart. I said, oh, oh, oh. Oh, that's what y'all mean when y'all say hook up. I said, no, no, I wasn't accu accusing y'all of having sex with one another. I'm sorry, I'm old, please forgive me. I'm, I've learned a few things. They, they teach me along the way and they just say, no, pastor, that's not, no, no. I just see them sometimes shaking their head. And then after service, I said, come on, educate me. Tell me what I, what I need to know. We got to support these young folk. Yes, they're young and pretty and all. And don't, don't get mad at them because they're fine. You used to be. <laughs> you had your time. You had your cute years. Pull out your old pictures. Some of them are Polaroid pictures. Pull them out. That was me. Look at that. That was me 40 years ago. Don't get mad at them. These brothers are cut and buffed and got pecs and stuff like that. I'm not going to cop attitude with these young, strong men. I had my day where the girls were looking at me. Now, now we need to celebrate these guys who are being looked at and help them to get some partnerships so that they can make it through. 
Your, ch- your size has changed. Roll with it. Don't try to unsave that girl because she saved in a two and you saved in something else. She built, you used to be built. Now yours has gone the way of the earth. Keep on celebrating these young people. You got to watch your seasons. Temptations come in certain seasons. Fourth, you got to, the enemy knows where your priorities lie. You, you got to get your, you need some kingdom partners who will help make sure that your priorities are the way God wants them to be. You will not transition into his purpose when the kingdom is not first in your life. The kingdom of God has to be first. Jesus said, seek ye first, not third, not seventh, not 26. Seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness. Make that more important than anything in your life. And what's the promise attached to that? Then everything you need, God will add it to your life. I'm watching God add stuff to me that I need. I didn't even have to ask for it. All I have to do is stay focused on the kingdom and God's just adding stuff into my life. Oh, there are a lot of people leaving my life too. Because a lot of these old haters, they just, they just that, that's the way that they uh, oppose you. They just walk away. I have learned, I have the gift of goodbye now. Honestly, I really do have the gift of goodbye. Any of y'all struggle with that? Pass, I'll be down here for a few minutes after the service. Pass by. I, I got such a gift, I probably don't even have to talk, uh, touch you and be spooky in the name of Jesus. I probably don't have to do that. Just let my shadow pass by you. I got the gift of goodbye. Folk that I walked with for decades fall out with me and, that, and don't want anything else to do with me or I can only deal with them on their terms. I am way too old for that. Please. Go ahead on where you're going. The Lord bless you. I got the gift of holding the door and the Lord bless you and keep you. Lord, make his face shine upon you. Be gracious unto you. Lord, lift up his countenance upon you and give you peace. Bye. Just because they used to be there, they're not, they don't have to be there all the seasons. Some folk were there for a season. God bless you. I love you in your season for me. Now you want to go somewhere else? Go ahead. And don't leave thinking that my life can be messed up because you're gone. In the words of that old theologian, Beyonce, you must not know about me. See, I know some of the, I know some of the millennials' music too. And now you got two generations after millennials, so that's why I called it old, because Beyonce old for these young folk. But y'all remember when that old theologian Beyonce said, you must not know about me, I can have another you in a minute. Matter of fact, he'll be here in a minute. To the left. Everything you own in the box, to the left. Oh Lord, I got a minute 38. Wait a minute. You got to know where your priorities lie. And the last W is you got to know why you must, the enemy wants you defeated as soon as possible. Enemy knows why you must be defeated as soon as possible because he knows if he lets you build these purpose partnerships and get through what he's trying to throw at you now, there is no stopping you. The enemy is throwing everything. Some of y'all came in here, you have gone through hell. The devil is throwing everything imaginable at you. I came to tell you it's strategic. It's cause the devil knows if he doesn't get you now, he is gonna run into all kind of trouble. Cause where you're going, where God is taking you, eye has not seen, ear has not heard, nor has it entered into the hearts of people what God has prepared for you. And God's going to do something in your life. So build your purpose partners. Find the people who want to love God like you want to love him. 
and make a covenant. Your job when you see me tripping is to pull me aside and talk to me and pray with me and do whatever you got to do so that I can be the person I'm supposed to be. You need purpose partnerships so that when you're sleepy, they'll wake you up. When you're tired, they'll perk you up. When you're discouraged, they'll cheer you up. When you're discouraged, they'll cheer you up. When you're disgruntled, they'll sweeten you up. When you're crooked, they'll straighten you up. When you're dirty, they'll clean you up. When you're tardy, they'll kept you, catch you up. When you're guilty, they'll fess. They'll help you fess up. When you're childish, they'll help you grow up. When you're empty, they'll help you fill up. When you're low-key, they'll help you turn up. When you're timid, they'll help you stand up. When you are cold, they'll help you heat up. When you're complacent, they'll help you fire up. When life knocks you down, they'll help you stand up. If you're depressed, they'll help you look out. And if you're gossiping, they'll tell you to shut up. And whatever happens in your life, whatever happens in your life, they'll make sure you don't give up. You got to build some purpose partnerships so that you can transition into everything that God has for you and you won't miss a single thing that he's ordained for your life. Oh, stand up with me, everybody. The Lord knew some of y'all would be here who needed me to make these emphases. And so I just hold the, heard the Holy Spirit say, drive that purpose partnership thing home very, very deliberately because you're not going to get there by yourself. We need to be done with this spiritual Lone Ranger stuff. Just me and the Holy, all I need is, the, hey, all I need is the Holy Ghost. You can quicken all you want. You need more than the Holy Ghost. You say, oh, that's blasphemy. No, it's not. It's biblical. By one spirit were you baptized into the body of Christ. He didn't ever baptize you into the body if you didn't need the body. You need more than the Holy Ghost. You need him and the people that he's lining you up to be purpose partners with. Stop trying to be a lone ranger. We old people know even a lone ranger wasn't alone. Come on, old folk. Y'all watched him with me Saturday morning. We was old. We was old. We was young people back in the 60s. Saturday morning with our high, high water pajamas on watching TV. We saw that the Lone Ranger wasn't alone. He had good sense. He had Tonto with him. Batman was, had sense. He had Robin with him. And you're going to need part, purpose partnerships with you. All right, let me call to this altar four categories of people who need to come and make a life-changing decision. There are four of them in particular that I want to call. First, those of you who are here who don't know the Lord is your Savior, I want you to come down now. You, you, heard, you heard the Lord speaking when I was talking. It wasn't me, it was the Lord. I want you to step out from where you're saying, where you're standing, because the Lord wants you today. Come on, come on. I need to be saved. Come on down. I need to accept Christ as my Savior. Come on, step out of that row. Step out of that row. If you're in the balcony, I'll wait for you. Come on. I need to be saved. That's right. That's right. Come on. Second category, backsliders. Some of you all once asked the Lord in your life, but you have gone, you've been doing your thing. You've been like the prodigal son of Luke 15. You've been living your life. Well, God's calling you back home because you'll never transition into what he has for you while you're a backslider. So I want you to come. It's time for me to get spiritually right. Come on, that's right. I need to get things right, spiritually speaking. Come on, right now. Third, there are those of you who would say, I'm, I'm unsure. I really don't know where I stand with God. I really don't know where I stand with, honestly, Pastor, I don't know. Well, good, you come because we're going to help you know before you leave here. Don't leave here with a question mark about where you stand with God. Come on, right now, and we will cause you to, to leave here with a certainty. That's right, come right on. And then the last category are those of you who are saved, but you don't have a church that you're connected to. And these days we watch churches. You can sit at home and watch churches all over the world. That doesn't give you purpose partnership. I need you to come. I need to join a church so I 
can help, they can help me find purpose partners who will help me get where God's taken me. So if you're in one of those four categories, come join these people. You need to be saved. Come on, come on right now. I need to be reclaimed. I'm a backslider. Come on right now. I'm spiritually unsure. I want to be sure. Come on right now. I am saved and I need a church that will help me build purpose partnerships. Come on right now. Come on right now. Come on right now. Father, in Jesus' name, we break any chain where the enemy is trying to hold somebody back. Break that chain, Lord, in the name of the Lord Jesus. Amen. Come on, you can come. If you're in one of those categories and you're standing there saying, I wish I had the courage to come, you can come right now. We'll wait for you if you're in the balcony. Come on, come on. If you're on the floor, come on. This is your time. The Bible says the day you hear his voice, don't harden your heart. That's today. Come on. They're still coming. Come on. Come on. Praise God. Praise God. Praise God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you. Anybody else, if you're standing saying, I need to come, come on. Come on, make that move right now. Do it right now. Thank you, Jesus. Glory to God. Glory to God. Glory to God. Sing that just one more time. I think there's somebody still waiting. Come on, come on, come on, come on. Come on. That's right, young man. That's right. That's right. Thank you, Lord. That's right. God. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you for the harvest, Lord. Glory to God. Glory to God. All right, everybody here who needs to be here, if you're there and you need to be here, last call. Come on. The Lord loves you, has a tremendous plan for your life. You will never know it until you step out of that row and meet me here. And if you do, he is gonna, you're gonna begin a journey today that you will never, ever regret. And you will thank God for this day because you said yes to God, amen. Well, we thank God for this wonderful harvest I just want to just want to pray a quick prayer with you and as soon as I've said amen these people standing behind you they are on the ministry team here they're going to take you uh, to a room where they will minister to you one-on-one -on -one. and by the time you leave here in a few moments you will be on the right road heading where God wants you to be and God's going to do amazing things in your life so let me pray for you father I thank you for these men and women boys and girls. Thank you, Lord, for this beautiful harvest. And I pray, oh God, that you will begin their journey with them today, whether it's to get saved, to get reclaimed, to know spiritually who they are, or to join this church, and it will propel them into their destiny. Thank you for it. In Jesus' name, amen. Go with these folks where, they where they're taking you, and we'll turn it back over to the ministers.